Hello, and welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa, and today I'm joined by Jill Duffy. We have a great show for you today. We're actually going to do a double hit today. First, we're going to do PC Mag Live. We're going to talk to you about the top news stories of the day. We're going to show you one cool thing, and then we're going to be back on air in a couple of hours after the Apple event. Very exciting, very big day for us in tech news. We're going to do a nice debrief after the Apple event and kind of give you a Fill in about everything that happened there. Once we actually know what Apple is announcing today, we will we will break it down. But we have a pretty good idea. We are calling it iPad Day. We assume there are going to be new iPads today, at least a new iPad Mini with a, a thinner, faster, a thinner, faster iPad Mini with a higher resolution display. That's going to be very. I think that's going to be well received. Um, and then maybe a larger iPad as well. Yeah, I think uh, we might see some other improvements that came from the phone. Mm -hmm. So there could be a uh, fingerprint scanner. There could Absolutely. be um, some processor improvements. So we'll have more on that a little bit later. The other things that we're thinking about from the Apple announcement are going to be Mavericks, um, which is the new operating system for Macs, um, and possibly a new MacBook Pro. Yeah, the new MacBook Pro is going to be the, the, the uh, the, t the Mac Pro, the trash can-like version of the Mac. Right, the one which, that reminds me of a Star Wars character. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I mean, they, I like that they're going for it. Desktops have been kind of bland. We haven't seen interesting desktops outside the gaming space. So I like that they're doing it. Um, let's see how it actually works. Hopefully we'll get a review unit into the lab soon. But uh, that event takes place in just about 45 minutes. So, you know, come to PCMag.com. You can follow our live blog, get our analysis as we go. And then we'll be back on air as soon as it's over with with more analysis I think it's pretty exciting. It's probably the last big announcement of the year. And um, we've got three people out there at the event in San Francisco. They'll be reporting back in. Lots of information that's going to be heading out today. Pretty exciting stuff. Right. Well, the other thing you might be watching online in the last few days um, is kind of some disturbing stuff. And this is happening on Facebook. Um, Facebook has gone back and forth about whether they were going to allow some beheading videos. This was a video shot, I believe, in Mexico. Um, of a woman being beheaded. This is kind of dark and gruesome, um, but the part that's that's not so surprising to me is Facebook sort of flip-flopped. Said a, one thing, said another thing a few days later. It's a tough call to make. I mean, the, Facebook really is becoming a news platform for millions of people, millions of its users, and, you know, if you want to be able to comment on things, you have to be able to present them. And a Facebook spokesperson put it like this, uh, Facebook has long been a place where people tune in to share their experiences particularly when they're connected to controversial events on the, gro on the ground, such as human rights abuses, acts of terrorism, and other violent events. Um, how do you talk about those things if you can't actually represent them? I mean, certainly no one would complain if the New York Times had put it up as a piece of journalism, so why would Facebook ban the same well, thing? Well, I think, I think if the New York Times had put it up as a photo, they would have warned readers before reaching that photo. Right. Um, and, and I think there would have been a big controversial discussion. And they're a news site. You know, Facebook is not really a news site, so it's, it's true that while people would want to be there to discuss it, um, there's a lot of information coming at you, and it takes a lot of uh, time and effort to sort of control that information and what you see. So a lot of concerns have been coming up about the fact that children are on Facebook. Um, Facebook recently opened up the platform so that people under the age of 17 or so, wow. could, or, or is it between 13 and 17, yeah. something like that, could like officially now have accounts. Um, so th there were concerns on that front. I mean, I personally probably don't want to see that on Facebook. I want that to be the kind of news and the kind of graphic information that I need to seek out and be aware that that's what I'm going to see. I don't want it just popping in my face when I'm not prepared for it. Yeah, I think the, the important distinction is that the uh, New York Times has editorial controls. There's someone making this decision. Facebook is a platform. They can't control what everybody put, what people put out there. All they can do is create a terms of service. Um, and you know what? If you don't want to see that type of stuff, don't follow people who post those types of things. Yeah. I think that's the that's the bottom line lesson here. Also in the news today, Netflix has announced that they have more subscribers than HBO. Netflix has really been a great turnaround story. Uh, a year ago, we, they were they looked lost, they looked aimless. Now they've got 31.1 million subscribers and have generated 1.1 billion dollars in revenue, largely on the strength of their original programming. Orange is the New Black, uh, House, House of Cards, Cards great right. series. I mean, they really, they are in a lot of ways out, out, out HBOing HBO at original yeah. program. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the original content, and I'm a big fan of this, this idea that uh, people who don't necessarily have connections to huge studios, huge budgets, uh, lots of talent can approach Netflix. And, and I think the, the, the first couple of shows that we've seen that were original content certainly did have some names behind them. Um, and I think they've sort of tested the waters and proved that it can work. 
Um, and I'm really excited to see what Netflix is going to do next. Whereas HBO, I love their content too, but it's so hard to get it. Um, you have to subscribe to a cable service provider that will include HBO in your bundle. And then if you want to watch it streaming, you've got to sign up for HBO Go and authenticate in another way. And I would just love to see the kind of um, options that Netflix has from HBO and, and with their content catalog. But I think for the convenience of people like me, we're going to go to Netflix because it's just so simple. We can consume as much as we want for $8 a month, and it's great. I think that you're going to see HBO mimic Netflix, but we're also seeing uh, Netflix mimic HBO. They've been talking to cable operators about providing a Netflix application with your cable package on your cable box, which would sort of blur the lines even further between what's a subscription service and what's an online service and what's bundled in with your cable package. Really, the bottom line is the consumer wins in all these scenarios. <laughs> There's more yeah. great content on TV than ever before, and part of it is because of companies like Netflix. Yeah. Let's talk about the one cool thing it we've just gotten into the lab. Cool yeah. yeah the, we have this Surface 2 just came in. Brand new Surface based on last year's model. But uh, there's a couple of interesting things. I'll show you the, the close up version. Really just looks like same form factor as before, same kickstand, which they make a very big thing about that the iPad does not have a kickstand. But the, uh, the interesting thing about this and the, the attachable keyboard, keyboard, the system doesn't, uh, there's no sense using it without, the, uh, without that. But um, this is the RT. It's $449. It's designed to compete with the iPads, possibly the iPads that are being announced later today. It runs with Windows 8.1 RT, which we've been have mixed feelings about, but we'll see how it works in this implementation. And also, the screen is super high resolution. It's a 1920 by 1080 screen. So really, one of the most attractive tablets on the market. We liked it when it came out, when the original one came out, but I think the Surface 2 kicks it up to a whole different level. So very cool. We're going to get this tested soon. I mean, you've used Chromebooks. You've used iPads. Any, any, any appeal in a Windows well, 8 I've, tablet? I've, I've used um, one of the Windows 8 tablets when they first came out, and I really, to be honest, I really struggled with it. But I've struggled with the Chromebooks, too. Um, meanwhile, iPads, kind of an easy experience for me. Um, part of it, I think, is just sort of adopting to the, the new way that things are laid out and figuring out how do, you, how do you find things, how do you go to the desktop. And I found myself over and over again going back to the the traditional Windows desktop rather than using the app interface. Yeah, everybody did. Everybody yeah. did. But this does have a touch screen, so it, it's sort of a metro native. It works with that. I'm just going to show one thing before we go. The kickstand has two points of articulation. One of the complaints was that if you're using it on your lap, that one kickstand position wasn't really a great way to use the device. So now it's got another one. Mm. It leans back a little bit further. You get less glare. I mean, a lot of little improvements. A really well-designed device. We are going to review this. As soon as we're done taping the show, we're going to send it to the bench and start testing. This review should be live in just a couple of days. And I'm sure we'll have lots of comparisons with uh, any new iPads that come out today. Indeed we will. So go to PCMag.com to follow along live Apple's event. Uh, we're going to be commenting. We're going to be blogging it. We're going to be on Twitter. Um, that will be happening at 1 p.m. Eastern. And right after the show, we're going to record another show with our impressions of what Apple announced. Jill, thanks for joining me. I'm going to see you in a couple of hours right here. And we'll debrief we'll, then. We will, and we hope to see you as well. This has been PC Mag Live. Join us in a couple hours.